guys, Marco here from Aviero Live CS. Welcome back to my channel. Today we will continue talking about the electrical system for the Boeing 737 800NG. And today we will be reviewing AC power system and DC power system. So let's get into it. The AC power system is made up of transfer buses, as you can see there, main buses, galley buses, an AC standby bus, and ground service buses. If two power sources are connected, the bus tie breakers open to prevent parallel operation of the generators. So here you can see bus tie breaker one, here is number two. If only one power source energizes the tie bus, the tie breakers close to supply power to the two transfer buses. The sources of AC power are ground power, the APU generator, and the engine driven IDGs. These annunciator lights tell you about transfer bus status. Transfer bus off, which you can see here, shows that the related transfer bus is not energized. Source off tells you no power source is selected to energize the transfer bus. This light can also illuminate when a generator switch is moved to on and the related generator does not connect and supply power to the bus. Or if a connected power source is replaced by a different source. Under these two conditions, the transfer bus does stay energized. Gen off bus light, this one here, tells you the transfer bus is not supplied with power from the related IDG. APU gen off bus, you can see it here, shows the APU generator is available, but does not supply power to a bus. The light extinguishes when the APU generator is connected to a bus. Ground power available, this light here, illuminates when ground power of good quality is connected to the airplane. The light does not extinguish after ground power is connected to a bus. All right. When ground power is connected, the transfer bus off and source of lights extinguish. So you won't see these lights. The true transfer buses are energized through the tie bus. The APU generator disconnects ground power from the tie bus. The source of light illuminates because the manually selected source has been automatically disconnected. When engine 2 gen is selected to on, the gen off bus light extinguishes and the bus tie breaker opens. The number 2 IDG supplies power to transfer bus 2. When an IDG supplies power to one transfer bus, the other continues to be energized by the APU generator or ground power if it is connected to the system. The APU generator or ground power can energize one or two transfer buses, but they cannot be connected to any part of the electrical system at the same time. When engine number one is running and the gen switch is set to on, the number one IDG supplies power to transfer bus one. The APU gen off bus light illuminates because the APU generator is no longer connected to a bus. The AC electrical meters show voltage, as you can see here, voltage, frequency, and amperage of the source selected by the AC meter selector. Remember this one here. The galley power switch controls the power to the galley buses. It is normally set to on during pre-flight. If the APU continues to supply power to the transfer buses after takeoff and then fails or is shut down, the IDGs automatically connect to the buses. The automatic generator online feature is available only in flight, only one time per flight 
and only under these conditions. During flight, if only one power source is available, the electrical system automatically removes power to some buses to decrease the total electrical load. And this is referred to as load shedding. The galley buses are de-energized first. If the load continues to be greater than available electrical power, the main AC buses are de-energized one at a time until the load is less than the system limit. Later, if more power becomes available, some or all of the buses are automatically energized again. During the taxi in, you can connect the APU generator after the APU gen off bus light illuminates. Once the switches are moved to on, the APU generator now supplies power to the transfer buses. The engines can be shut down normally when the airplane is at the gate. So that's basically it's about the AC power system. Now let's talk about the DC power system. The 737 uses three transformer rectifiers to supply 28 volt DC power. You can see them here. The TRs change 115 volt AC from the transfer buses into 28 volt DC for use by the DC buses. TR1 is supplied power by transfer bus 1 and is the normal power source for DC bus 1. So here you can see transfer bus 1. TR1 receives power from the transfer bus 1. And TR1 is a normal power source for DC bus 1, as you can see here. TR2 is supplied by transfer bus 2, and it's a normal source of DC bus 2. Again, you can see transfer bus 2 here, and TR2 is connected to the transfer bus. And then the DC bus 2 is connected to TR2. All right? Transfer bus 2 is the normal power source for TR3, but transfer bus 1 can also be used. TR3 is an auxiliary source of DC power if TR1 or TR2 fails, and is also the normal source of power for the battery bus. If a TR fails, the remaining TRs can supply power for the total DC load. The DC buses are connected by a cross bus tire relay, which you can see right here. This relay opens automatically when the glide slope is captured during the ILS approach. The relay opens to isolate the navigation receivers and flight control computers. This prevents the removal of all approach information because of only one electrical failure. The relay also opens when the bus transfer switch is moved to off, if we put this switch to off. If normal sources of power to DC buses fail, the emergency source of DC power is the battery. Battery power can energize the two standby buses, the battery bus, the hot battery bus, and the switch hot battery bus. The hot battery bus is always connected to the battery power. You can see the hot battery bus here. Its components operate as long as battery voltage is above a minimum value. Power to the switch hot battery bus, which you can see here, switch hot battery bus, is controlled by the battery switch. The automatic battery charger restores and maintains full battery voltage. The battery charger is supplied power from AC ground service bus 2. And you can see the battery charger here, and you can see the AC ground service bus 2 here. When a source of AC power is available. The controls and indicators for the DC system are on the AC and DC metering panel. The DC electrical meters show voltage and amperage of the source selected by the DC meter selector. 
So you can see here, this is the VC meter selector. And it's again, it shows uh, voltage and amperage. The maintenance switch here is used by maintenance personnel to do electrical system tests. So guys, with this, we finished part two of the electrical system. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are not subscribed to my channel yet, please do it now. Again, if you think these uh, videos could be useful for somebody else, please share them. And that's going to help me a lot to grow the channel. Next week, we will continue reviewing the electrical system, guys. Until then, please take care and hope to see you soon.